So once again, welcome to everyone and thank you very much for joining us as we discuss use cases of using graphs in the financial industry. So a lot of customers are interested in uh, uh, from the financial uh, uh, services industry are interested in graphs. So we thought we should talk about, we should have a session focused on these use cases. All of these use cases are real. They are either customer references or POCs ongoing or recently completed at customer sites, where it's possible to mention the name, where they are a public reference, we do mention the name of the customer. So joining me here today are my colleagues. Uh, Rio Tayamanaka is my uh, product management team colleague uh, focused on the Asia Pacific region. And Gautam Tisharam is a solutions engineer working on various customers Work, uh, who are work using, uh, uh, getting started and using graph technology. So thanks to Gautam for putting together this nice uh, slide that also kind of helps give an introduction to graphs. So you can see here that graphs are a connection of vertices and edges. Uh, vertices representing the data entities in your data and edges the relationships between them. So you can take any data set and look at that uh, through a graph model. And that helps you do analytics on your graph based on the connections between these data entities. Here you see that Riota and I are both members of the same product management team. So we're connected by the edge member. We collaborate with Gautam. So we have a edge with label collaborate with the solutions engineering team and so on. And we are here today from various parts of the world. So all of these are different connections about us and what we do that can help you analyze this data. And graphs are really good at identifying new insights which are not immediately obvious using other um, analytics methods. Our standard safe harbor statement. And we have uh, the agenda here where Riota will kick things off with an overview of applications that are particularly relevant for the financial services industry. Then Gautam will talk about a customer use case that he has been working with. And then Riota will have a demo, talk about how machine learning can be combined with graph analytics. And I'll wrap things up uh, with an example of a customer who uh, was doing a customer 360 degree analysis using, using graphs. So with that, let me stop sharing and hand this off to Ryota. Okay, thank you. Right, uh, let me share my screen then. Okay, um, can you hear me and can you see my screen? Yeah, we can okay, hear you. Good, screen. good. Um, now, uh, well, uh, uh, welcome. Um, I am uh, uh, Ryota Yamanaka, a product project uh, product manager in Asia Pacific. And then, just briefly, um, I'm gonna uh, start with the explanation about the uh, main three uh, applications of graph in this industry. The first application is uh, using graph-based queries to follow many frauds. Graph queries are very performant to follow uh, edges on graph. Having bank accounts as nodes and transactions as edges. Uh, graph queries can find the relationship between two accounts like this one and this one. And, and, and also, um, can detect the specific patterns such as uh, fraudulent activities. The next application is that uh, holding the data in graph, uh, different types of data sets can be uh, connected and visualized easily, uh, like in a graph visualization application. Uh, financial services maintain not only the transaction data sets, but uh, also personal information such as family relationships, uh, withdrawals from ATMs and the login histories uh, from the websites. So all these information for a particular account uh, can be shown in one screen as a graph. And this is useful um, for uh, personalizing the services and uh, uh, manual uh, investigation for uh, suspicious accounts for fraud detection. 
the uh, third application of graph is uh, to combine with machine learning. Machine learning is the key method to enhance and automate fraud detection, but its performance is limited by the training data set. A human being can uh, find the anomaly, anomaly uh, combining multiple rela uh, related information. So how we can generate um, such features of the accounts from their relationship inform information is the key to train and improve the uh, machine learning model. I will explain a, a little more about uh, this technique at the end of this session. I have explained three main applications of graph in this uh, industry. In the next section, uh, Gautam will talk about an actual customer use case and how they maximize uh, these applications of graph. Okay. I'm gonna Thank you, Ryoda. Okay. Just okay, uh, let me share then, my screen. Uh, stop sharing my screen. Thanks, Yota. Oh, hello, and greetings to everyone. In the next few minutes of today's uh, afternoon session, we'll be exploring how Oracle uh, performed a proof of concept at one of the customer banks based in India and enabled them in realizing the strengths of Oracle Graph as an analytical platform. So the customer is a bank based in India and they had very specific and very critical business challenges which they wanted to address around uh, detecting fraud financial cycles or identifying the criminal uh, patterns uh, by analyzing the relationships between the different customers. One of the quick challenge uh, they were facing was identifying the relationships from their worst data or high volume uh, data landscape. We will slowly explore uh, their business challenges uh, one by one and how we enabled them to uh, fight their challenges. Uh, the introduction slide on the evolution of fraud. So we'll just examine uh, the challenges that was given to us from the bank perspective uh, from a use case um, um, sense. So the first challenge, as we can see on the illustration to the left, uh, was based on individual transactions. So we are focusing on individuals who are customers leveraging financial services uh, from the banking um, applications so, uh, like various frameworks like mobile web platforms. Um, so they would be doing a lot of transactions and over a period of time, the relationship would obviously evolve uh, to multiple customers, multiple friends using the same bank accounts and um, 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 trying to um, transfer the money between different people and establishing the relationship. So if we look at today's world, we have successfully tried recreating the relationships of a real world and map it to a social network. Uh, what happens in this case is we, we would obviously um, uh, try to capture information uh, on the various transfers between different customers, uh, map it to applications in the background, and then try to identify the relationship. And the bank would be having different challenges um, uh, in relation to the high volume data landscape. So the first challenge was based on how to identify the uh, fraud patterns or the patterns uh, like uh, patterns with criminal records from millions of other transactions. The second challenge, um, as we can see on the image or the illustration to the right, was based on companies or organizations or corporations. What happens when we try to examine uh, fraud cases when it comes to corporations? The use case was like, uh, let's take an example of a real company. Uh, they would obviously have different employees. The company would be transferring the uh, salaries to the employees and there would be a loyalty factor between the company as well as the bank. And based on the loyalty that they establish between the bank and the customer or the company, um, the employees of that particular company would be eligible to 
um, leverage a lot of financial offers uh, that would be offered through credit cards, debit cards, or even through the web platforms like uh, applying for a loan and getting it dispersed in a very uh, quick time or in an immediate way. So they are all offers released to customers just because they are part of a global company or a company. Now, what happens when um, um, someone try to create a fake uh, company and then try to register themselves as a sub uh, company or a sub um, entity of the real company and then associate different employees uh, to the fake company? Just because they have registered or they have associated themselves to the real company, um, at the end of the day, they, their employees of the fake profiles created as employees under this particular sub-entity would also be um, eligible to avail the offers uh, because of the loyalty factor between the original um, company and the bank. And how do we detect the fraud patterns or patterns with criminal records when we try to encounter such corporate cases. So that was the second, second uh, challenge. Uh, let's take a look at how the system um, or the banking domain works in today's world and then I'll try to translate it using an example of the property graph. If you look at customer, modern day customers are all empowered. They are well socially connected uh, through various platforms like mobiles or the um, web, uh, web platform like online net banking. The way we interact with the bank, the way we um, or transfer money between different people have evolved as a seamless cashless process over a period of time. Thanks to the uh, various fintech companies who are working in the background, uh, working on various innovative technologies and make this technology seamless. Obviously, we have the entity, which is the bank, uh, who has to obviously catch up with the fast-paced digital transformation. And they have to also make sure their regulations and the laws regarding the information technologies are in place when we are dealing with very seamless cashless uh, uh, transactions between the customers and the various uh, framework. Now, when all of the entities come together, let's say when customer fintech and the bank comes together, it kinds of create a sense of loyalty between the three parties. It, it kinds of create a trust within the system or a loyalty within the system. And because of the loyalty that we have within the system, it then allows us to leverage various financial services, which is obviously good for the society as well. But what happens when we try to um, leverage the same financial services uh, in a fake way. So what, what happens when we try to fake the loyalty or what happens when we try to recreate the loyalty in a fake way? Uh, the banks would obviously encounter losses when somebody would leverage the financial services and just vanish away. So that, that's something uh, we try to equate to being fraud cycles by right? leveraging the uh, cycles in a fake way. Let's try to explore this in more detail uh, through a property example. As we can see in this screen, um, we have um, a story of different friends. So we have uh, Liam. Um, who is friend of Camille, who is a friend of Negita, who is then friend of um, an account holder who happens to be the owner of the company where Camille works. So just because of the circle between Liam, Camille, and Negita, the fourth person is also now associated as a friend uh, in a complete end-to-end uh, uh, -end, uh, relationship cycle. So let's just take an example wherein Liam who is the owner of account 292090, transfers an amount close to $10,000 to Camille, um, uh, whose account is 10039. Camille then transfer um, $1,000 to Nikita. Uh, so uh, uh, take note that the amount is different. The amount transferred from Camille is different to Nikita. And Nikita then tra uh, transfers in multiple cycles to um, um, the other account, which is 1001, which happens to be the account of the owner of the company where Camille works. Just because they are all friends, they are able to seamlessly transfer money between everyone. In a real happy world, what would happen if the motive of the people or the intention of the people are good, then um, just because they are 
uh, taking or leveraging the financial services uh, to transfer the money between different people uh, this would in turn make sure they would all be eligible to leverage different financial services as well let's uh, uh, let's uh, t- uh, just take an example that camille works for oracle so oracle as a corporate company when it is associated with a corporate bank the employees of that particular bank just because they are associated with a company like oracle would be able to leverage multiple offers through their credit cards debit cards or even by logging to the net banking and apply for a loan and that would be dispersed in a very uh, immediate way uh, just because of that particular association um, there will be certain modules running in the background with the banking layer which we would uh, take a look in more detail um, uh, what usually happens is banks usually have machine learning layers running in the background which would be trying to learn the behavior of different customers and then try to generate um, recommendations on uh, what kind of offer i should throw to one particular customer what kind of offer i should throw to a different customer and just to increase the loyalty factor people associated or friends associated with um, uh, customers who are then part of um, a big corporate would also be eligible to avail different offers it's all working based on different um, um, uh, recommendations um, you know, that will be generated based on various machine learning modules in the background uh, this is to make sure the loyalty still remains the same and make sure the company as well as customers are happy and they grow together now uh, uh, let's um, take an example on what happens when we try to um, make the same simulation in a fake way so let's say for example liam as a person camille as a person nikita as a person have an intention uh, which is criminal in nature so we take the fourth person who is the um, owner uh, of a company and uh, let's just take an example um, uh, one person would start a fake profile and associate that particular company as um, a sub entity of a real company and if liam camille nikita are all fake profiles and if they are associated with a company which is in turn registered with a real company over a period of time they would be able to leverage the same financial services as well so they would be eligible to um, take a huge amount of money using their credit cards they would be able to leverage financial services at uh, different outlets uh, through their credit card as well as debit card they would be able to log into the net banking and would be able to apply for immediate loans as well and then they would just vanish away. so the bank would be ending with a huge financial loss so how to um, identify the relationship pattern or the people involved in such fr- uh, such transactions um from a mix of million other transactions so if you take the example of india as a country it's a very densely populated country and we have like millions of customer accounts within the bank so how to uh, identify patterns um, um, from within that huge uh, data volume and how to make sure like uh, we identify or we um, um, confirm it as a fraud pattern uh, since these are all customer account numbers these are all very sensitive information so it could be uh, a, 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 since it is associated with the real people or probably fake people trying to uh, fake based on real people these are all very sensitive information so you also have to look at the various regulations as well as the laws regarding the information technology practices uh, we cannot just um, um, confirm a certain cycle is criminal in nature or fraud in nature so you have to find out different patterns uh, from a mix of high volume data landscape and then try to identify or investigate further into the same transactions and that's exactly where graph analytics will empower uh, an organization with uh, by complementing the advantage of uh, analyzing relationships between different people Uh, uh, by using different attributes associated with the nature of the transaction and by implementing such an innovative solution like graph analytics you are not just complementing the organization you are also complementing the government and the associated uh, public entities related to or the governance and uh, information technology law practices um, now to make sure like the um, crimes related to financial transactions uh, are all regulated in a structured way
obviously with the uh, graph what what happens is like you will be able to um, analyze the relationship based on the vertex edges uh, different properties associated with the vertex and the edges as well as the labels so it gives a complete uh, picture while trying to analyze the relationships uh, the next slide is on why oracle uh, when we say why oracle why uh, customer wanted to come to oracle it was primarily because of the business challenges which they were facing internally um, the bank as a uh, as an organization uh, they had obviously implemented a high data volume landscape uh, uh, which ranged from the uh, big data ecosystem they had a uh, good business intelligence and business analytics team uh, who were handling the various uh, transactional as well as analytical uh, processing applications they had a good uh, database management team um, uh, to make sure they track the individual transactions of millions of customer accounts in a uh, very proper way so uh, one of their uh, main concern was to identify the relationship or how to identify the relationship from such a high data volume landscape so we had to prove uh, uh, the main strength of uh, Oracle Graph as an analytical platform as well, uh, we just prove the scalability, how to make sure we can scale based on the ever growing uh, data of the organization and the associated uh, uh, parameter to it, which is obviously the performance, how quickly you can detect the uh, cycles and various patterns uh, from a scaling environment. So that was the uh, very basic challenge uh, we initially had. The second challenge uh, we had was to make sure our product can um, uh, cope up with built-in algorithms as well as visualization so the bank obviously had a data science team who are very well versed with uh, graph analytics they already tried implementing um, graph based solutions using both open source as well as other software solutions but uh, they were all uh, facing difficulties when it comes to proving the scalability as well as trying to applying different algorithms on a huge data sets um, which obviously takes us to the third criteria, which was to make sure uh, we have an easy product to um, complement the data scientists to um, um, detect the cycles in a shortest way. Uh, this particular slide where I've named it Connect the Organization, uh, it, it's probably to um, uh, give an overview of um, um, what kind of skill sets uh, you can probably leverage when it comes to implementation of a graph-related uh, uh, use case. Um, if you take the example of a financial implementation, so let take, let's take the example of a, a multi-dimensional um, analytical application like Oracle SBase. Uh, what usually happens, so it, it's it's an aggregation tool which uh, helps the business to uh, aggregate the data from low level to the high level. And that would obviously be fetching data from a data warehouse and the data warehouse would be connected to different databases as well. So we have to obviously deal with the transactional data to uh, finally come to the uh, analytical data. Uh, we cannot just start off with an analytical applications. Um, Correlating that particular example to a graph network analytics, um, um, as we can see in this uh, picture, it's not just the data science team who is working on such an implementation. We have to start from the very root, which is to pick the raw data, which is transactional in nature, wherein we have to talk to the business analytics as well as the database management team, trying to make sure we capture um, data from different or separate data systems and then combine it together. So we had the support of their IT operations team who was um, uh, doing a lot of hard work trying to communicate with both the database management team as well as the business analytics team, trying to collect and organize data from the big data platform as well as from the database and the data warehouse platform. We collected the data, we organized the data, we put it in the database and then uh, we again went back to the business analytics teams and with the help of uh, the business analytics team, we could enable them to generate the various vertex and edge tables within the relational database, which is again an inbuilt feature from where we passed it on to the data science team and the data science team could then leverage um, uh, from the other teams and try the algorithms on top of the 
vertex tables as well as the edge table trying to load it into the in memory and then trying to pass on the results for further investigation to the risk analytics team uh, so it's it's kind of an overview of how different teams and different skill sets can come together and complement uh, uh, to reach the final uh, solution trying to solve the various business challenges on the way uh, we had two uh, approaches to showcase to the client as we can see on the left uh, we call it the ants approach and as we can see on the right it's the tiger approach so ants approach um, um, is basically a very methodical approach in which we were trying to um, collect the data from various data sources we were trying to organize that uh, data which we collected we were trying to structure it in a very nice way and then um, um, once once we had uh, different flavors of data based on different data base systems, we then loaded it into the memory. So the end analytics was still faster. So uh, the end analytics was performed um, uh, in an in-memory level and was visualized using the uh, PGVIS, which is the visualization tool from Oracle to graph perspective. But then a lot of focus was uh, given to the uh, um, organization of the data on how to organize it in a very neat and structured way so that it can be uh, used in a long-term perspective uh, let's say for example if they want to incrementally load the graph data into the in memory it can be leveraged by making sure we have um, set up the structure correctly in the database management systems uh, looking at the illustration on the right, obviously the transformation into the tiger while uh, jumping through the Oracle ring. So what happens when they want to complete an investigation in a very quick way? What happens uh, when they want to quickly uh, analyze something based on the raw data or based on the data that resides in the database without converting it to the vertex tables and edge tables? We still have, um, um, we can still do a configuration wherein we can directly load the data which resides in a database into the graph and can be uh, leveraged into the in memory which can be quickly converted into the graph um, relationships so that was the second approach uh, trying to put it in an architectural perspective the um, hands approach we were converting it from raw data which we collected from various landscapes we organized it within the relational uh, database so this was again to prove how good the oracle uh, database is uh, from organizing the data uh, we were able to collect data from multiple data source systems and then um, um, do various joins come up with the tables and views and um, uh, structure the data in a very neat way and then generate the um, graph schema which is again a built-in feature of the uh, database where it generated the vertex tables as well as the edge table which can then be leveraged um, for long-term use like uh, I was mentioning about the incremental data load so you can incrementally load the data into the in memory from the graph schema and then can be quickly visualized using the graph base the second approach uh, which we call the tiger approach uh, we loaded the raw data into the database 19c and from 19c we were loading the raw data from database into the in-memory directly without converting it into vertex table and the edge table. So the data could be directly uh, loaded into in-memory using a configuration file and that was visualized using the graph base in the end. So both approaches were showcased to the client to give the value on how they can uh, leverage database in a long-term perspective and from an incremental load perspective and uh, uh, how they can leverage the in-memory engine uh, to show the strength of how performant it can get when they quickly want to investigate into certain data set. The other challenge that they were facing, they obviously wanted to make sure they run certain algorithms um, 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 on the fraud analytics space. So uh, uh, trying to probably be very specific regarding the financial use cases, um, um, in relation to the fraud analytics uh, the data science team were already aware of a lot of algorithms uh, that we leverage as part of um, 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 fraud analytics like they were already uh, aware of the ranking and working algorithms like page rank personalized page rank degree centrality closeness centrality vertex betweenness they are all specific algorithms used in uh, detecting patterns and uh, trying to identify hidden patterns in relationship so let's uh, take an example like uh, if you look at the path finding analysis um, we have the very famous shortest path and the Dijkstra algorithms which can 
um, really um, uh, draw the shortest path and detect the cycles from millions of transactions. It can also be leveraged in uh, cases like outage analysis in utilities and networks, trying to identify the vulnerability analysis in IP networks or the ever famous Panama Papers. So these are the uh, areas wherein uh, algorithms like pathfinding, ranking and walking will really help you. Uh, obviously, there are the pattern matching algorithms as well, which can help us with the fraud detection as well. Um, um, if you look at the uh, left hand side we still have more algorithms like the anomaly detection which can uh, still come in handy for social network analysis as well the community detection and the influencer analysis which can be leveraged for churn risk analysis or hr turn uh, analysis so various built-in algorithms are there which will help a data science team or the analytics team run these algorithms by calling the uh, built-in functions um, on top of the data that you have uh, loaded to the in-memory. Uh, the next challenge was to make sure we uh, hand over a system which is very easy to use from a end user perspective. So one of the challenges which they really wanted to solve was how quickly they can write a query to find the cycles. So if you focus on the left, it's just a very short query. You are just selecting the um, different attributes, the name and the age from the social network graph, and you're trying to match a pattern and trying to put in a filter. Uh, by just writing a small query like this, it will then detect the patterns from millions of um, uh, records and then visualize it in different pages within the graph visualization tool. So in this particular example, we are trying to find all people who are known by friends of Amber. So the uh, query is very short and is very uh, straightforward as well, which can then be leveraged within the graph visualization tool. The other challenge the customer was facing, they obviously wanted to make sure the graph visualization tool can draw both directed as well as uh, non-directed uh, uh, graph, as well as the uh, bipartite graph as well. Uh, we showcase the functionality uh, using graph visualization on how you, uh, they can generate the graph and how they can write the query in a shortest time as well. We also showcased the functionality by which they can call in um, the various algorithms using the built-in function. So you don't have to write an explicit long code using open source uh, scripts. You can, if you just want to uh, find the influencers or if you um, uh, want to find out the individual who are then influencing different groups who are then performing the cyclic uh, financial transactions, you can just use the vertex between us and reality and you can just use the built-in function to uh, call using the shell um, uh, execute it on top of the uh, graph that was generated and then it will uh, detect the patterns so it, it was very easy to uh, call the functions as well uh, this is one of the screenshots from uh, the proof of concept that we uh, did with the bank so if you can notice on the screen uh, it's very easy to write the code or the pgql query the programmable graph query uh, we are just selecting the vertices and the edges we're trying to match so in this particular case um, uh, we are trying to fetch all those cycles which was initiated by um, a to b through an edge one then b to c through an edge two c to d through an edge three and d to um, a back to A through an uh, edge four. So A to B, B to C, C to D, and D back to A. So we're trying. It's a four-node cycle. We call it a four-node cycle based on a, a specific transaction type, and we are trying to limit the number of cycles to uh, 0.1 million. And we also showcased how they can um, uh, fetch the cycles um, um, from the 0.1 million and between the 0.2 million and between the 0.2 million and the 0.3 million. How they can fetch the cycles in um, a different um, format as well. So as we can see in this uh, uh, figure, the Gaia graph visualization really helps you uh, fetch the cycles um, uh, using the PGQL query. Uh, coming to the performance, um, um, uh, we were dealing with uh, 73 million customer accounts. There are one, uh, 37 million uh, transactions and uh, we could detect 0.3 million cycles uh, from the 73 million customer accounts and there are 137 million transactions. And it 
probably took just few minutes to detect the 0.3 million cycles from a mammoth uh, uh, record of information that was belonging to 73 million customer accounts and their 137 million transactions. It's just one of the use cases. We had like multiple use cases. So I uh, just wanted to give an overview of the uh, um, uh, kind of results it was looking like. We just wanted to focus on the 0.3 million cycles detection in very few minutes, uh, which really impressed the customer. They were really struggling to uh, fetch and um, uh, fetch the uh, cycles from the same uh, data set using different tools. But Oracle really scaled up to expectation and was able to detect the 0.3 million cycles from those 73 million customer uh, accounts. Um, as an end output, what was reduced? The overall end-to-end -end cycle. So if we try to um, uh, start from um, the database to business analytics to data science to uh, risk analytics team, the end-to-end -end cycle of graph was much reduced. The overall graph processing time was reduced. And what was improved? Uh, we were able to scale the system by uh, scaling multiple months of data. We were able to be performant uh, in relation to the uh, scalable data. And then we uh, delivered a simple and quick solution, which really enabled the data scientists to uh, uh, conveniently use the system and then identify the different patterns. Uh, just to focus on the Oracle Graph Edge, it enabled the data scientists to create graph models in a much faster and quicker way. It's a comprehensive platform to consume the data quickly from various platforms. It doesn't necessarily need to be the Oracle database. It can consume the data from different platforms as well, like a big data platform as well. Um, it's a complete digital ecosystem for complete graph cycle, and it ensures the goodness of the business change if you want to bring in regulations and laws in relation to the information technology or laws. I'll now hand it over to Riyota to proceed further. Thank you. So while you're switching, when you're, I know you're going to stop sharing and when Riyota starts sharing. I had a quick question for you on uh, the machine learning piece. I think you had mentioned that uh, the bank was also doing uh, machine learning and this was to complement that. Can you very briefly talk about that? Right. So uh, what happens uh, functionally in the background is that uh, when customers start when customers start interacting with other customers through financial transactions, the bank has deployed uh, their machine learning modules in the background, uh, trying to uh, detect the behavior in which the customers are making the transaction. So based on the customer behavior over a period of time, they would then activate certain offers to be um, uh, available for these customers. And then the customers were taking advantage of those financial services. It could be related to the credit cards. They can just log into their net banking and then can um, uh, leverage uh, loan services in an instant way. So they would just apply and based on the loyalty that they um, uh, established by leveraging the machine learning modules in the background, uh, it would be granted and they would just uh, get the money. Now, um, uh, people were also able to beat the system by trying to create fake profiles and um, uh, just simulating the same way they transfer the money. So they were able to um, uh, recreate the same loyalty from the bank um, uh, because of the applications that are run in the background and the options were activated for these fake customers as well or the fake profiles and they were able to just leverage it and get the money or uh, uh, get a loan, a huge loan and then they will just vanish. So they were able to get around the modules and then um, make sure they would just vanish it. So the, that's uh, the graph, graph was able to help, right? Yeah, it was right. Right. getting over that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, thank you. Over to you, Ryota. Okay, uh, can you see my screen now? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, in the next 15 minutes, I'm gonna uh, show one uh, small uh, demo and uh, one uh, POC experience, which is, which is about machine running, and one uh, customer use case, customer reference. Okay, so um, I will show a simple demo first, uh, which is about um, detecting cycle, uh, as uh, we've seen um, in the Indian bank. So um, I've got uh, a mock data with uh, 1,000 nodes, uh, 1,000 bank accounts, and each account has five outgoing money transfers. So it contains 5,000 money transfers in total. Then uh, we would like to pick up one account 
and show how many other accounts are connected in several hops. And if there's any cyclic money transfer starting from this account. So this is a scenario. And uh, I don't uh, go deep into the technical details, but uh, these are the graph queries. The first one is to counting the number of the accounts connected in uh, six hops, like one hop to six hops uh, from account ID one. And the second query uh, is for searching the shortest pass, uh, actually shortest cyclic pass, uh, starting from node n, which is which is a uh, node account account number one, and and coming back to the same node. This demo content itself is available from my GitHub repository, so uh, its setup is very easy. Uh, you need Docker on your laptop or cloud instance, then uh, clone this repository down uh, here, like clone this repository, download and extract uh, the packages, uh, Oracle Graph Server and Client, then uh, start containers using Docker Compose. That's it. Now the mock data is loaded on Graph Server on my computer, so we can query and visualize using uh, built-in tools such as Zeppelin Notebook and uh, GraphViz application from web browser. So I'm gonna show uh, you the Zeppelin Notebook interface here. Now, uh, the first thing to do is to, okay. Let me get my uh, mouse cursor. Ah, oh, yay. Okay. Um, yes, now I can see my mouse cursor. So uh, the first thing I, I, I can do here is to um, attach the uh, graph on memory on graph server and it contains thousand nodes and almost five thousand edges and this first query is to get uh, the nodes from uh, node one uh, in one hop so it should be uh, five nodes uh, if you uh, change these to two hops, you will get uh, 29 and let's say four. You get more like uh, well, 380 and if you uh, traverse six times, from the starting point, uh, you will get 750 uh, nodes. Then uh, this query is for um, for uh, well searching for uh, shortest pass, but the shortest cyclic pass in this case. Then the result is uh, I am actually searching for two shortest paths. And the first one is null, which means uh, this one is a zero hop path. So what we would like to get is actually the second shortest path. And this one is following uh, six nodes with uh, six edges. And these are the node IDs. So, so finally, um, it, it's coming back to the node one. So this is a six hop uh, cyclic path. Then uh, we would also like to uh, visualize. And this, this one is uh, Oracle's, uh, again, um, built-in tool. Here, uh, 
yep, uh, this is a graph visualization app. Maybe we can copy uh, one of those uh, queries here. Okay, let's get uh, these nodes in six hops on this graph visualization app. Run. Yes, then uh, we can get all 750 nodes here, uh, but uh, it is actually paginated. So the first 100 results are showing here. And those uh, each past might have uh, uh, several hops, but uh, they are not uh, shown uh, in this visualization app. The next things, uh, thing I can do is to uh, create our own uh, custom application. In this demo, uh, the components are one is a REST server here, and uh, which is which is written in Java, including uh, the graph client a, uh, Java API. And another thing is a graph visualization uh, JavaScript application on the web, uh, which is using uh, d3.js and developed by our uh, partner, uh, Kagura. So um, this one is uh, the REST API, the sample REST API against uh, this request for traversal from node one uh, with iteration six time. Uh, we can get uh, this kind of JSON. And another request is for uh, getting cycle from node one. And these are actually um, well, uh, issuing uh, those PGQL uh, graph query result uh, graph query uh, behind and get the result in JSON. So let's and 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 also um, the visual uh, uh, graph visualization app is using this um, REST API behind and can visualize the result. So let's uh, check the uh, one is. Uh, REST API. So this is this one is showing the result uh, for the cycle from starting node one. But uh, if I change this to two, uh, you will get uh, another cycle, shortest cycle here, right? And maybe you can also um, try the cycle from three, and you cannot get the the cycle, right? And, and it, it, it doesn't take more than you know, 100 millisecond. It's, it is very fast. So uh, when you have this kind of application, uh, this one is uh, showing a yellow node as uh, uh, this one is uh, the, the starting node, uh, node number one, and showing all the uh, 750 nodes, uh, which can be um, um, followed from uh, this node in six hops. And uh, oh, this node, node number one has uh, five outgoing edges and one incoming edge in blue. Then uh, we would like to show the cycle. So when you uh, click this cycle button, the request is uh, going to the REST server and get the result as uh, uh, in JSON. And, and this one is the, 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 the result of the uh, cyclic path. So if you uh, click for any nodes here, you will uh, find whether they have cycle here. Um, in this case, maybe uh, four steps, four hop cycle. And another node here might have, uh, yes, uh, cycle as well. And I found uh, one interesting uh, node here. This one, this uh, node 77 is maybe too far from the node one. So it doesn't show any outgoing edges, even though uh, this should have five outgoing edges. 
So um, when we uh, try to get cycle from here, the REST API uh, returns a cycle, but uh, we cannot uh, visualize the cycle here. Maybe because we are missing uh, some of those edges, because those edges are so far from, from the starting point here. So why don't we just uh, uh, read the row, uh, this graph centering this uh, node. So we can get the uh, uh, nodes uh, while traversing, uh, starting from this node. Yeah. Now the, uh, this yellow node is uh, node 77. So we can find uh, all these five uh, outgoing edges are visualized. And then, yes, we can find the cycle here, in, which is a uh, six hops cycle. Okay, um, I'm, I, I uh, well, plan to um, uh, upload this application and as well as a sample REST server uh, onto my GitHub. So uh, I hope you can enjoy. Uh, the uh, next thing I want to uh, introduce is to uh, how we can combine uh, the graph uh, technology with machine learning. Machine learning is often used for uh, predicting fraud account and for making good predictive models. So information coverage is very important, especially for, uh, for training uh, data sets. And uh, therefore the idea is to use graph store as a data, sto data source for uh, machine learning. So we can hold the data in flexible model, data model and graph algorithms and graph queries can enrich the, 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 the information. As an example, uh, let's talk about uh, Mueller count, which uh, often uh, stolen account and transfers money illegally. For predicting Mueller counts by machine learning, the information such as name, age, name, age, occupation of the uh, bank account holder and branch location and balance of the account itself. And those uh, or can be the uh, input of the machine learning and they can be the clue, uh, clues to, 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 to detect the uh, uh, suspicious account. Uh, but uh, you like to uh, have more uh, uh, information about uh, those accounts. Uh, we call these things as uh, explanation, explanation variables for uh, machine learning. And then uh, the idea is to use a graph. For example, um, if the owner of this account is sharing personal information with other accounts, uh, this person and this person, these are sharing a telephone number or email address. These uh, can be then uh, uh, useful information for detecting uh, uh, suspicious sus accounts. And this query uh, can get the, uh, the, 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 the result. And uh, second is how many fraud accounts exist in the same money transfer community. Uh, let's say this uh, blue account is uh, a known uh, mule account. And uh, when we assume that Mueller accounts are often sending money each as us, um, maybe we can find, let's say that these uh, accounts are in the same community, so they, they, they uh, might be suspicious. So uh, we can run community detection algorithms such as community uh, level propagation algorithm, and then we can find the uh, results, whether they are uh, in the same uh, community or not. And uh, this uh, third uh, feature is similar to the second feature, but uh, can make a score of crossness to the known Mueller accounts using algorithm called personalized page, uh, sorry, personalized page rank algorithm. So um, in this community, maybe this one is more connected to this one, 
uh, rather than let's say this one. So uh, that sort of closeness can be um, can be uh, uh, measured and then scored. So these um, new features uh, can be an input of uh, machine learning, and these are calculated by uh, or uh, in 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 separate notebook again. So um, this one is. Yes, this uh, use case was actually uh, was an actual uh, POC uh, in Asia Pacific uh, major bank, and and then uh, they have tried these or well, making these features, and get this uh, um, final result as a table, and then uh, or they can they can um, use these features. Uh, for detecting and, and predicting those uh, suspicious accounts. So our customers are trying to generate a variety of uh, features from graph and checking if those features are um, useful and can, they can improve the model, uh, that, uh, or for example, the accuracy of the prediction or not. So um, personalized page rank is uh, based on the operation called random walk. Um, but uh, we plan to support more advanced algorithms such as deep walk, uh, which combines random walk and deep learning. One uh, customer called PaySafe is a large online uh, payment provider, and they are maximizing the benefit of uh, graphs, especially for real-time fraud detection. They gave a nice presentation uh, before, so please check uh, these slides and video uh, once uh, this slide is published. Uh, you, can, you can follow these links. In short, uh, the uh, queries for following transactions have become much shorter from this length to this length and visible, and amazingly faster from 50 minutes to less than one second. And they have implemented their own visualization app in JavaScript. Also, they have tried deep walk and found it improved the performance of predictive model. Okay, um, I'm gonna hand over to Meli. Thank you very much, uh, Ryota. So there was a question asking whether you can share um, uh, the link to your Docker instance for to your GitHub page. So could you post that on chat? Okay. And um, I think that'd be nice. And then also it was really interesting to see the mule account detection. It reminded me of the Twitter um, fake account detection as well. Fake accounts tend to follow each other. So when you find such loops or such cycles, then that's an indication that it's probably a fraudulent Twitter or social media account. So I guess the same thing can be used for fake accounts. And thank you for really highlighting the different tools that we can use to do these things. So I will just wrap up with the last use case. I'll make this very brief. The reason we wanted to talk about this use case also is because that uh, we have talked about fraud, we talked about cycle detection. This is how do you use graphs to get a comprehensive view of your customer operations, the customer 360 analysis. And why are banks interested in this? So we are focused on Banco de Galicia, who use graphs to, to identify two things. Banks, which have a lot of, uh, sorry, customers, which have a lot of cash deposits, but then don't do much else with the bank. They just transfer the money elsewhere. Second, uh, banks, which are customers who are using the uh, bank services, but are not really generating a lot of revenue for Banco de Galicia. So they had this data coming in from multiple sources and they were able, they were not able to get insights into what specifically was happening with these types of customers. So just like Gautam and Riota were sharing, they created this graph model with a customer account and the bank 
uh, transfers that they make between different accounts. And also they have information on the loans they take, the investments they make and the cash deposits. So this was the, how they modeled the graph from their customer data and interactions. And they use other analytics uh, methods to identify a customer who has a large amount of cash deposits. So here's one such customer and they said, okay, this is the customer here represented in green at the center. And this customer had multiple bank accounts they were able to see and also had a bank account with the Banco de Galicia. So orange represents the Banco de Galicia. And they said, okay, uh, what we want to see what is happening here. And just like Riota was sharing, they wanted to like drill down into what is specifically happening with the Banco de Galicia account. So they were able to, so this account as, uh, as they highlighted here has a lot of transactions, over 11,000 cash uh, transactions for deposits and about 79 million pesos. So it's clearly a lot of work happening here, but then what is happening with the money after? So when they expanded this Banco de Galicia node that represents the user account, they found that a lot of transfers were happening to different um, uh, bank accounts in, uh, so the bank accounts in orange again are Banco de Galicia and the bank accounts in blue are a different bank. So they found that a bulk of the money was actually going to the different bank account, which is this blue represents a bank in a different account in a different bank. So a lot of this money was being transferred to this outside uh, for different bank. And from there, some of the money was actually coming back uh, as payment to providers that had accounts within the Banco de Galicia system. So the banks make money when, the, when they are the source for uh, funds transfer, not for the destination. So they didn't want the money to go out and then come back in. They rather, they want the money to remain in the Banco de Galicia system and transfer to providers. So they were able to identify by looking at the graph and kind of investigating what is happening with this customer by exploring and expanding the graph. They were able to identify that, okay, this the bulk of the money was going out and coming back in and we need to do something about that. So the next use case, um, and as you can see here, they had a lot of trans, a lot of money coming in as deposits and then leaving. And banks have to do a lot of work when it comes to processing deposits. So if the money is not useful for the, to them afterwards, this is not interesting to them. The next example is they wanted to see, okay, which are the customers who are doing stuff that's not bringing a lot of revenue to the bank? And again, they identified uh, such customers using different tools and then using graphs to look more closely at what is happening. So here's a customer having lots of um, accounts with different banks. And again, having two accounts with the Banco de Galicia represented in orange. So they look more closely at this and like Rieta was showing, you click on it to get the properties associated with that particular node. And they see they decided to investigate this node further, the one at the bottom, which had the uh, higher number, higher amounts of uh, higher, uh, more money in this in these accounts. So when they expanded what was happening with that account, they were able to see this yellow node pop up and the yellow node indicates investments. So this uh, customer was used, doing a lot of investments in this bank, in the Bank of Galicia, and getting whatever the results, the interest payment they were getting from these investments, they were moving that back into that account. So they had a lot of money, they were investing, they were getting the interest back. But finally, when they want to use that money, they were transferring to this third, uh, to this bank account with a third party outside Bank of Galicia system. And that account was presumably doing a lot of activity in terms because some of that money was again coming back to the Banco de Galicia systems as payments to providers. So once again, this is something where the Banco de Galicia was not making a lot of revenue on this money. I mean, they, they had the investment, but the money was finally going back, going outside the bank for payment purposes. And that's something they wanted to see how now can they target this customer for specific promotions that would encourage this customer to do to use uh, the Banco de Galicia's account as the source rather than transferring it outside. So they're able to get more insights into their customer interactions by modeling their data as a graph. So like they, they found that 50% of these uh, operations were between self-accounts in different banks. And the goal was to keep all of this uh, money within 
uh, the Banco de Galicia's accounts. So that brings us to the end of this session. Thank you very much for listening. We have here a bunch of links for uh, that you can take a look at to the, what is the Ask Tom page, our blog, and so on. We and our Twitter accounts if you want to follow us and see what uh, new and interesting things we're doing with graphs. And there's also, I want to give a shout out to the spatial and graph user community. We have uh, uh, spatial customers and graph customers. We encourage you to join this community to interact with other customers doing uh, similar work. And the next upcoming uh, Ask Tom session is likely to be on June 25th in a month's time on building recommendations with uh, systems with graphs. We're also planning on a session using REST API that um, uh, Riotta was talking about. That's very interesting and one focused on machine learning and so on. So keep coming back to the graph landing page and ask Tom for updates. Uh, let me just quickly see whether there is any other question. I thought there was a question. Well, maybe not. Okay. So uh, that's good. I hope you enjoyed this session. The recording will be made available. And uh, thank you once again. See you next time.